Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. This morning, I'm gonna go on a mushroom hunt. I think this dog's gonna come with me, but you know how she is with her fearfulness. I thought I'd start out right here and show Larry all the bluebells. These are Virginia bluebells and they're growing right underneath this big old walnut here. Uh, walnuts kill a lot of plants. A lot of plants won't grow under them, but apparently Virginia bluebells do. I planted this, oh, what was it? It was either a single plant or or two plants, you know, little things from the nursery. I planted this, oh geez, maybe eight years ago, and it's slowly spreading. We're a little bit into the woods, so it gets partial shade, and they're doing really well. There is another plant right over here that I planted at the same time. It's a blood trillium. I'm not sure if we'll see that or not. It might not be open yet. All right. This is mushroom hunting, not necessarily mushroom finding. So what I believe we're gonna do is go down the road right here, get onto the rock road, and then go into the woods and go all the way to the bottom, and then just kind of go back and forth, and then we'll end up on the rock road again and go up the rock road. There's a place at the other end of the property where I find morels every year. Uh, we don't know if they're going to be out yet, but we had rain for two days and it's early May. This is almost always the time when you find them. All right, let's get down there and start looking. Okay, here are some trilliums, regular old white trilliums. We're going to be seeing those all over in the woods. And... This one is kind of an off-white, and here it is. That's the blood trillium, and I believe it's the only one that comes up here. Oh, maybe this one is too. That one doesn't have a flower yet. I'm going to have to get back here and check this out in a couple days. I haven't seen that bloom in probably three years, just because I haven't been down here at the right time. I'll have to come back and see that. All right, enough of this nonsense. The dog's getting impatient. All right, I'm coming. Morels grow wherever there are dead roots under the ground. At least that's what I've found. A lot of people say to look for dead elm trees, but almost every one I've found on this property has been around a dead apple tree. So we'll see if we can find some around some dead elms. Also, right in this area somewhere, I found a huge mass of chicken of the woods growing on the side of a tree. At least that's what I believe it was. I'm not a mushroom expert and I did not eat that mushroom, but it was huge but I'm not seeing it anywhere, and it might not even be the right time of the year for that type of mushroom. I know it is for morels, so this area right here is gonna be ripe for morels too. We'll have to hit that on the way back. There's a whole lot of rotting roots right in this area. This is the top of an old savanna tree. This was actually alive when we first got the land, but it was sickly and then a uh, high wind took the top off. This actually went way out that way and I had to cut it so that that's the road right there. I had to cut it across the road. This gets mushrooms all over it in the summer, but we're gonna check the ground around it and see if we can find some morels. I was gonna bring my wife's walking stick. She has one of them, it's kind of like a ski pole with a point on it for walking, but I forgot it. Cause you gotta kind of brush back the May apples. Cause you could have a morel sitting right there and not see it. 
Sometimes the morels are very big though, and once you find one, you can just settle into that area for a while because there's probably going to be more. This is looking like a bust. Maples are probably not the right tree for morels. All right, let's abandon this and head deeper into the woods. You guys have never been down here, and I haven't been there in a while, so this should be pretty interesting. All right, we're right at the junction on the rock road. I think I'm gonna go in right over here. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do this. This is our old lot line right through here. And last year there was a turkey that had a nest right here. Maybe we'll run across the turkey as well, but there's a lot of trees down in this area and a lot of dead trees. So I'm hoping we find something in here. A couple of mushrooms here, but those are from last year. Not really sure what kind those are. There's part of it on the ground right there. So far, no good. Izzy's loving it though. This time of year, it's real easy to walk around in the woods. There's almost nothing on the ground. But soon, these ferns will get gigantic. They'll be five feet tall and spread completely out. They'll all be touching. And it's really hard to walk around in here. I believe that's an ostrich fern. And this one right here with the black stems, or they're actually dark red, that's a maidenhair fern. Those are really cool looking. All right, no signs of life yet, but we got some walking to do. I made a video about, I believe it was chicken of the woods on a stump right over here. Oh, I made that probably the first year of the channel. I'll link to that. I'm gonna go past that area on the way out, but I do believe that was later in the year. That was probably in June. I should look at that video and see when that was because that's the time I should be looking for that mushroom. Right now, I'm looking for morels and I am not finding them. I have found a bit of garlic mustard. This stuff is so easy to pull out. If you don't have a whole lot of it, it doesn't have much of a root system. And if you just pull it out and make sure that the, the roots aren't touching the soil, that'll just die. Yeah, there's a bunch right there too. <sighs> yeah, you can't kill it all. How you doing, big girl? You are so brave today. You want to go down to the bottom? Yeah, while we're down there, we'll check out our road. We haven't been using it the last few years because it was washed out down there. I'm going to see how that is. I'm going to have to go down there with the trimmer, probably with a blade on, because we get these brambles like this with the hard stem. I believe this is blackberry. But they get a hard stem and they'll get, oh, 10 feet long and they'll curve right over the road. And I want to get rid of those if we got a whole bunch of them. I've done it in the past, but like I said, it's been, it's been a few years. When this ash right here fell, it pinned the top of this white oak to the ground. That really sucks. It's been a couple years, you could tell by the way it's starting to grow straight up again. After a while, this is going to be a really weird looking tree. It's too bad. You could see the deer run running right through here. Right through there. And it goes right across the very top of this ravine. Our property ends on the other side of this ravine. It's actually a good ways over there. We're going to get over there and then head down. This ravine gets pretty big towards the bottom, so this is the best place to cross. And that's why the deer made a trail here. Got 
Got a shag bark hickory right here. We don't have a lot of those on the land, but they're really common in this area. I believe, oh, I don't know, maybe not. Oh, that's it right there. That stump right there is where I found that chicken of the woods. Yeah, there's definitely none growing on there because that stuff's visible from a long ways away. All right, let's keep going. Izzy Poo, let's go down. For being so afraid of walking down that road, she is really doing well in the middle of the woods here. That post right there, that marks our boundary. It's a little closer than I thought it was, but that's it. Okay, this is an elm right here. And it looks like there's a dead one on the back. That slippery elm. But I'm not seeing anything around it. I'm going to look a little better. Yeah, the elm trees generally have these buttresses. A lot of them look like a big paddle. I believe this is another elm, but it might not be the dead one. Nothing there though. Might just be the wrong day. Bunch more elms. What do we got here? Four. That one looks like it's dead too. This looks like a really good spot to look for morels, but I'm going to guess that they're not out yet. We'll try the apple trees up by the top as soon as I get done in the woods here, but I may have to come out tomorrow and the day after as well. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything here either. Got a grapevine coming out of the ground right there goes up around that branch and then down here and around that branch. I'm going to try to show you there's a couple down this way that are, I don't know, they're the size of a tree, a smaller tree. They are just huge. This is the bottom ravine right here. This is Spirit Hollow. This is kind of like a road right here, but it's not really a road. The road is on the other side, so we'll get down through the ravine and up onto that road. And we'll check that out, and then we'll head back up through there. That massive ravine right behind our house, and two more really big ravines going up that way, all terminate in this right here. This will completely fill with water, and you can see that log jam right there. That happened a few years back when we had a massive rainfall. The rainfall was so heavy that up around the corner there, there's another dry area like this that's been dry for many, many years. It cut it down about two feet deeper and it exposed a bunch of springs. So now we have running water right over there. I'll show you that real quick and then we'll head back up. This is kind of broken up now. When that storm first hit, this was solid all the way across. I think that was five years ago, maybe six. It was a while ago, but it was a massive storm. The road doesn't look too bad, except there's a ton of these willows along the sides. And I need to get in there with my blade and cut all of these down. I need to go back, oh, a good three feet on each side. And then 
later in the year when these things start re-sprouting I need to spray them and get rid of them every few years you got to do that otherwise the road will completely clog up when we first bought the land this was all blackberries but I'd rather have this than the blackberries the willow doesn't really hurt you as much we got a lot of mushrooms in this area from last year I'm gonna have to get down here and take a look a bit later in the year this is all on loose bark right here but what I wanted to do is look right in this area right here most mushrooms like growing on old logs and stuff so this is probably a rich area right in here again I'm not a mushroom expert but that's my thoughts on it it's kind of interesting how this cherry when it rots it cubes itself bunch of cubes right there that's pretty cool I don't see anything growing here except for a ton of garlic mustard yeah that's really unfortunate all right let's take a quick peek at that stream and then we'll head back up how you doing big girl this is so fun isn't it This trail used to go right through here and it got completely washed out by that storm. And then we relocated it over here. Water still goes over this every time there's rain, but it'll take a big storm to wash this out again. This could really use a little bridge. During that same rainstorm, you could see the edge where this collapsed this was just a hill this entire side of the hill collapsed and it plugged up the ravine right here and this right here turned into a lake this was full of water for at least a year and it was maybe four feet deep and it slowly washed away like that pretty cool during a big rain water will squirt right out of the side of these rocks right here this whole area is peppered with springs and there's a bunch of caves and stuff as well it's a really awesome area that's our ridge up there we are about 130 feet down from the top oh looky here we have some tinder fungus or tinder mushrooms these are used as fire starters and they have been since prehistoric times you could tell all of these grew since the logs been on the ground because they're they're parallel with the ground if they grew on the tree and then the tree fell they would be like that yeah those are pretty cool they should oh, these are pretty hard when these get older and bigger you can pop them right off and you can actually light them and like put them in a bag and that's how they used to carry fire around back in the day that dog is just going way ahead is he is he I'm going this way oh don't tell me it dried up that would be tragic oh no it's dried up again this was running for four or five years after that storm and now it's dry again oh that really sucks yeah this is listed on all the maps as a dry creek and now it's dry again damn does that suck okay let's go back and look for mushrooms you know what thinking about it I may have been on the bend before we got to the main creek there there may still be water flowing in that we'll have to come look at a later date Izzy is just having a blast are you having fun girl let's go okay this is Justin Junction and we have five roads that come off of this junction one goes up the ridge on the other side but all the rest are down here 
That is my brother-in-law's mount for his trail cam. And right here, they put down that deer cane right here. Got a bunch of tracks in there. But right in this area is where we caught the pictures of that bear. I know to most people it's not a big deal if you catch a picture of a bear in the woods. But there haven't been bear here since the 20s or 30s. It's been about 100 years. They were hunted completely out. They're way up north and they're slowly moving back into the area. So I have a video camera and I'm going to get that set up. I'll probably put it on one of these T-posts and put it like right here. And I think I'll bait with some candy or something just so we get some good video of the bear. All right, we are going to head up that deer trail right there. Izzy thinks she's going up the road, but she is wrong. Wrong way. This part right here is where it was washed out. It was about two feet down on the edges and you could not get the gator through here. So a lot of the maintenance on this side did not get done for a few years. We had a dozer come and he scraped dirt from here and made it passable again. I have this stuff on a few older videos. I can link them if I can find them, but they don't have washed out road in the title. so might be hard to find. The chances of finding mushrooms are a lot greater going up the hill than coming down because you can see under all these plants. But it does not look like anything is out yet. It's been very dry this year. The rains we've had amounted to less than an inch, so maybe that has something to do with it, but there is absolutely nothing out here. There's a widow maker right there. Just a clean snap. And then it's hooked on that tree a little bit and the top of it's hanging there too. Yeah, that could take you out. This stake right here, that was put here by the previous owners of this land. This is two more lots that we bought after we bought our original lot. I think they bought these two lots as speculation. That was right around the time of the Great Recession. And everybody was buying land and flipping houses and just going crazy. And then the sky collapsed on everybody. Okay, we got a cluster of elms right here, but these are all alive. And we're looking for a dead elm. Yeah, I think I'm just a bit too early. If I was a day or two late, they would still be here, but there is nothing here. I'm gonna have to try again tomorrow, but there's an apple tree up here that I find them almost every year. We'll go check that and we'll go see what's going on in the vineyard. Here's a birch with some horse's hooves on them, or what are they, tinder conks or tinder mushrooms? That's the way they should come off. And then if you light this on fire, it will smolder for hours. And what's his name, Atsi, that prehistoric man that they found up in the mountains, he had a couple of these in his bag. Okay, I'm at the end of the rock road here, coming up around the curve. I've found morels here on occasion as well. And generally where you find them once, you'll find them again the next year. But it is not looking good for mushrooms today. Okay, the apple tree's our last hope. I got to this point and Izzy was under the apple tree waiting for me. This is one hell of a smart dog. She's never gone morel hunting with me before. I think she's just psychic. I've found like a dozen morels under that tree in past years, but I believe last year I went out on the wrong day or maybe there just was none. 
but I've also found them around little stumps out here as well. The vineyard is moving right along. It's only going to be a couple days before I got to get out here and spray. When the shoots get to four inches or four completely open leaves, that's when you do the first spray. And that's going to be pretty soon. I'm getting desperate to find a mushroom today, but it's not going to happen. This is an old dead apple tree right behind the house. And I've found mushrooms here before and nothing here. There's also a dying apple tree in the woods right there. Nothing by that either. So it's too early. I thought I would show you this area. All this white grass, those are all weed grasses. This was sprayed with mesotrione, which is generic tenacity. And then we have the buffalo grass growing amongst it. This is buffalo grass, perennial rye, and weeds, but the weeds are all dying. Pretty cool. I got to get in here again. You're supposed to do a follow-up spray, so I'm going to have to do a follow-up spray in a couple days when it's not so windy. It's just way too windy today. I also spot sprayed just a little bit over in here where I found egregious weeds and you can see they're dying as well and the perennial rye is doing just fine. I don't want to waste a lot of time and money on this area. I did seed it but this is probably going to have either a dozer or a cat reshaping this if we build that shop this summer, which I'm really hoping we do, but it might not happen. And if it doesn't happen, I don't want a whole bunch of foxtail growing here again. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. I think I'm going to go again tomorrow real quick and maybe just check by the apple trees. As soon as you find that first morel, you're going to find more. Okay, so if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.